vigor, idealism, fearlessness. These words associate with the notion of youth. It is a formative period of life where one negotiates a sense of identity and dreams for the future. We're Young Ones is proudly presented by Art Agenda and is part of Singapore Art Week 2022 and supported by the National Arts Council. It is open to the public from the 8th to the 30th of January at 63 Spottiswood Park Road. With youth and its various associations as a curatorial framework, We're Young Ones is an exhibition that gathers significant early works by Singapore artists across generations. For me, it is a show about the artistic journey and the fact that every artist begins from somewhere. By focusing on this formative period, I hope to propose a new lens to consider Singapore art history, one that upends conventional chronology and is non-hierarchical. At its core, We're Young Ones explores what it means to be a young artist. I had two criteria for artworks on view. Firstly, they need to be representative examples of the artist's early practice. And secondly, they should also speak to the theme of youth in general. Provenance is an important consideration in my selection process, and each piece points to a significant milestone in the respective artist's career. Lin Yu Kwan's War and Peace opens the exhibition with what seems like a call to arms. In the centre of this monumental painting is a hand which points to the viewer. There is a traffic light rising from behind, as if to ask, which direction are you headed? Lim's patchwork of iconography is a snapshot of the global issues of its time. Lim painted War and Peace in 1957 to embed in the painting a sense of urgency and social consciousness, beckoning one to take action at these flashpoints. The hand also features prominently in Amanda Hing's Lost. Executed simply in three primary colours, the impact of its imagery is forceful. Against the bright blue background is a large yellow hand which wields the Chinese inkbrush like a knife. The word lost is written in red. The 1980s was a period of systematic change which affected not only the education and curriculum but also the civil service at large. The painting expresses Amanda's sense of displacement, even uncertainty for the future. Crucially, Lost was painted in the TAB studios in Lorong Gambas and is one of four oil-on-canvas works that she's ever painted. In contrast with War and Peace and Lost, Guo Liang Tan's flower paintings stand out for the lack of a Singaporean subject. The floral arrangement floats in a field of colour without a vase. They are strange images that call to mind on 17th century Memento Mori paintings or Impressionist still life works. Yet, they seem to reject the vivid virtuosity of these predecessors and instead teeter towards abstraction in the economy of Marx. Sukairi Sukifli is a lens-based artist whose practice explores the notion of Malayness through the racialized Malay body. His works Happy Birthday and Youthful provide a layered perspective to the theme of youth. They appropriate elements from a set of photographs belonging to the artist's father, which were taken in the mid-1980s. In Happy Birthday, Zokairi removes the cake at the centre of the celebration and resurfaces it materially by printing the photo on a cake box. These works are a documentation of male friendship that resists homogenous conceptions of racialized men. Genevieve Chua adopts the language of cinema in her photographic series from 2009 raised as a pack of wolves. As its title suggests, the work is premised around a fictional narrative of feral children left to fend for and find others like themselves. The wolves are performed by androgynous queer identifying girls whom the artists met on the streets or through blogs and friends. Like Sukari's works, the idea of community and visibility are key in Raised as a Pack of Wolves. Youths in Balaclava is a design collective and streetwear brand that started when its founders were still in secondary school. Their work is characterised by a self-taught DIY aesthetic and underlying commentaries about growing up in Singapore. In the exhibition, there is a set of 10 masks 
each representing a member of the collective, as well as Twisted Paradise, a terrarium-like sculptural display that is a nod to Singapore's geography as an island within a larger archipelago. Four zero five zero one two zero zero eight is one of Ruben Pang's earliest paintings, which precedes the development of his recognizable style and hypersaturated palette. It features a highway marked by harsh streaks of white that cut diagonally across the painting. These sharp horizon lines suggest a sense of velocity in the otherwise moody scene. Wei Cheng Nian belongs to the first suite of target paintings exhibited at ENT's debut solo exhibition called Sweet Dreams in 2019. A pair of weathered Converse sneakers are hung off the work as a nod to Vincent van Gogh's 1886 painting, A Pair of Shoes. Ian's sneakers are tied together by their laces and dangle in a manner that recalls the practice of shoe tossing or shoe fitting. Though the motivations behind this act is varied, it is generally regarded as a rebellious gesture resulting in the lace shoes hanging up high places such as on power lines, telephone wires and old trees. Anthony Poon's Kite series is his first major body of painting which began during his studies in the United Kingdom. On view are four kite maquettes made between 1969 and 1971. Their aerodynamic form draws inspiration from the momentous Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969 as well as the motives on traditional Malay kites. Painted in punchy day-glow colours, Poon's complex tessellation of triangular forms evoke a sense of rhythmic propulsion as the viewer's gaze move in and out of bands of colour. This exploration of light and the optical effects of pattern will become a hallmark in Poon's career. Jeremy Sharma's Soma and Kala continues this theme of flight and lightness. These two works are from the artist's Terra Sensa series, which made its debut in the 2013 Singapore Biennale. They are based on his research into pulsars, remnants of collapsed stars which continue to emit an electromagnetic pulse. This data is first visualized into a three-dimensional model of ridges, peaks and valleys. A computer-controlled router will mill into this form out of a block of high-density polystyrene foam. Teo Eng Seng's Emperor's Choice is a significant example in the artist's turn to the medium of paper dye sculpt and exhibited in his 1981 solo exhibition at Alpha Gallery. When broken down into a base material, paper pop becomes an endlessly malleable medium for painting, sculpture or even installation art. Hence, the work represents a spirit of youthful experimentation and reinvention. On the topic of pulp, Shubi G. Rao is more interested in pulp as a verb rather than a noun. To pulp a book is to strip it of its cover and dissolve its contents. The River of Ink is an installation from 2008 consisting of dozens of hand-drawn and hand-lettered books which are doused in the same black ink used in its creation. Rao describes it as an exercise that emphasizes the fertility of preservation in the face of cultural genocide. Presented first in the artist's Master of Fine Arts graduation show in 2008, The River of Ink is a foundational piece in her long-term research into the history of book destruction and other forms of oppression. La Yu Tong's newspaper painting sets out with a body of work concerned with the overproduction and overconsumption of images. His intervention is simple. He paints over printed text and graphics with white acrylic paint until a desired composition is achieved. At times, this results in unexpected relationships between the images found on a particular newspaper spread. With its surrounding text removed, these images are taken out of context and float, both in terms of how they appear and understood by the viewer. In the work Justin, Song Ming Ang spent three months practicing to replicate Justin Bieber's signature. This arduous process is documented on a stack of practice sheets, which the artist presents through a revolving slide projection. The artist complicates the way we think about value, especially as it relates to authenticity, uniqueness, and skill. 
Sweet Sweet Naked Potato is the fourth iteration of Tay Inning's series of naked potato works that began in 2015. Coming from a family which runs a metal fabrication workshop, her decision to use the potato as a subject is one that cheekily blends life and art. Made out of mild steel, which begins to rust once the work is made, these metal potatoes challenges one's expectations about the value of a work of art and its permanence. Ironically, the rustier it becomes, the closer it resembles a real potato. Finally, Tang Da Wu takes this question of value into a broader philosophical discourse. Useless Things is the artist's first important body of work, which he made while studying at Birmingham College in 1971. He taps into his Chinese heritage with a reference to Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, Chapter 11, which meditates on the idea of emptiness or void. He illustrates this concept by literally filling up the empty spaces in everyday items such as kitchen utensils, ladders, and even the space where one sits in front of a desk, thus rendering them useless things. Circling back to origin stories, I believe in the necessity of sharing these narratives because they did mystify the artistic process and give context to the journey each artist has to make. For me, the exhibition is not only a reflexive look into my own position as a young artist, but also an assertion of agency. As the curator, I'm conscious of creating a non-hierarchical framework because the treatment of artists in intergenerational exhibitions are often unequal. By delving into the provenance of each work, I hope to foreground the lived experience of these artists, their concerns, as well as the networks and conditions in which they operated. It is about honouring these micro-narratives and carving out a space to imagine such curatorial possibilities.